Hi, so in this example, we're going to take a graph of a function in which it is a derivative of another function. We don't know what that function is. We don't know what the derivative function is. All we have is this beautiful picture here. All right, and then what we're going to do is determine the intervals of increasing, decreasing, values of f that have local extrema and points of inflection. Now we're just going to list the values of x. Now notice I don't ask where the derivative graph is increasing and, and decreasing. No, 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 no. I'm using this graph of the derivative to find where the original function is increasing, decreasing, and local extrema. So what do I know about the derivative function? I know so a little bit of some pieces, right? I do know that where the derivative function is equal to zero, the original function has horizontal tangent line slopes of zero, okay. which would imply that if where if the derivative function is negative, that the original function is uh, decreasing. on that interval. Where the derivative function is positive, meaning y values, we know the original function is increasing. Okay. So we know those little pieces, right? So let's go ahead and um, try to determine uh, the first piece. On what intervals is f increasing or decreasing? Well, f is increasing and decreasing where y values on this derivative function is positive or negative, meaning y values are positive above the x-axis. This is where the derivative function is positive. Where um, the derivative function is negative is where its y values are negative. So we could see that this piece here and this piece here all have y values. If I took those ordered pairs, those y values would be negative. Up here, I can see these are positive, right? And that means I can see that the y values on those ordered pairs would be positive. Okay, so again, it's really clear. Where f is negative, these pieces here, is where the original function f is decreasing. Where it's positive, these intervals here, is where f is increasing, the original function f. So we have them. Okay, so we know decreasing would be this interval here negative 4 to 2. We never include endpoints. Right. Union over here from 4 to 8. Increasing would be above the x-axis. It would be this interval here, this interval, and this interval. So it would be negative infinity to negative 4. Open, right? Always open. Um, from negative 2 to 2, I mean, sorry, negative 2 to 4, I read that wrong, union uh, 8 to infinity, all open. Okay, that's not too bad, right? You're like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> now, for which values of x does f have local extrema? Well, we know that where f prime is zero, f has tangent, um, sorry, slopes that tangent lines that are zero. So where is that? Where you have zeros on your derivative graph. So where we have zeros on your derivative graph is the x-intercepts. You guessed it. That's right, right here. Okay. So we know there is potential local extrema at x equal negative 4, negative 2, 4, and 8. We could also determine which is a max and which is a min, right? We know that 
here, um, above the x-axis means that the original function here was, this is positive, meaning f was increasing. Right? And then it went from negative. And then over here, positive. So it went positive, I mean increasing, decreasing, increasing, right, and still increasing. And then over here we had decreasing and back to increasing. So we could see at this zero here, here are the zeros. I'll like, there we go. Those little pink dots. Now we can kind of, we actually can see the shape of the original function, huh? We see that it's like that. <laughs> but now we can see like when we know that plus minus, like we know where it's decreasing, increasing, and we do the first derivative test, right? We test where that first derivative is positive and negative, and where that first derivative goes from positive to negative is where we have a local max, and where it goes from decreasing to increasing, right, or negative to positive, we know we have a local min. So we actually know that we might have some local min at x equal um, negative 2 and um, where is that? 8, right? and possibly some local max at x equal negative 4 and 4. Not that it asks for this min and max, but it's a great thing to think about deeper. I mean, this is really deep thinking, right? Like we're taking a total graph. We have no nothing. We don't know anything about its original function. Taking this derivative graph and finding all these characteristics of a totally different function, right? My antiderivative, right? My original function. So it becomes really interesting how we can take a derivative functions graph without knowing what the function is, what the original function is, and find all this information about the original function. I mean, I think that's what is the power in calculus, right? That's what makes it so powerful. Right, so part C says, well, now you find all this information. Tell me where it has inflection points. Well, we do know that F has inflection points where it changes concavity, right? So where F changes concavity. But we know when we find change in concavity, these points of inflection, we know they lie at the critical values I'll put poi lie at critical numbers of the first derivative. That would mean in order to find the critical numbers of the first derivative, this would be implied that the poi's are where the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so where the second derivative would be equal to zero, this would mean that they are zeros on the second derivative graph, right? You can almost see the same process, right? Which would mean, in this case, on the first derivative graph, these are where tangent lines are horizontal. So if I have the derivative graph like this, and I need to find the x values where there's points of inflection, that's where you're going to go and go to those little humps right here, right here, and right here. Because that's where you'll have the first derivative test to have horizontal tangent lines or where the second derivative would have zeros. We can estimate this. This looks like negative 3. This looks like one point eight maybe or one actually that looks here is one so maybe one point one and then this looks like it would be um six about six so i would say we have points of inflection at x equal negative three one point one and about six I mean, they're just estimations, so I wouldn't worry, you know, as long as we're close, I think it works out just fine. So in a review, if you're given a graph of its deriv of the derivative function, you can tell where the original function is increasing and decreasing by just seeing where that derivative function lies above and below the x-axis, those intervals. Where they have local extrema is at the zeros of the derivative graph. 
And where it has points of inflection is where the derivative graph has horizontal tangent lines. All right, I hope this helps.